Well, good day, YouTubers. It's been a very long time, and I'm really sorry for taking so long for not being very active on my YouTube channel a lot, though. And um, the reason why I wasn't really active on my YouTube channel for a long time was because I've been busy just making more for that toys, uh, obviously, for like four days, obviously. Maybe two days, I can't remember though. But, anyways, I'm just glad I got a tiny car out, you know, 200 cargo time, running like so, and I'm just glad it's running in action. With this new fresh battery, even though it's not as fast as I would might expect though, but, um, quite a very restrictive looking cargo train. And there's my again, so. And there's beautiful looking oil tanker container things on the flatbed wagons that go away. And there's also a new change here that you might have seen in the, in the other video there. Uh, all of the boxes have been moved all the way towards this section here where the wardrobe doors are. Basically the two doors actually act as a very very interesting looking wardrobe. And uh, to be quite honestly honest, uh, it's not really active anymore because all of these boxes have been moved to that section there because, well, Obviously there's a train set here, and uh, that goes straight towards next to the radiator there because obviously if it's next to the radiator, well, it's going to catch the whole box on fire and next thing the house will be totally engulfed in flames and will be burnt into ashes. I don't want my house to be incinerated, indeed. So anyway, in this video I'm going to take a look at some various pickup products which will be very really amazing now. Most if not all of the products uh, obviously ones, uh, they're pretty much the ones that have been pretty much taken so much hard work today, but some of these products, all products, have been pretty much uh, been made for a very really long time, and they're uh, quite amazing. Some of them were made quickly, the others have been made for pretty much like one or two days. Even some for more like, I would just say, three days in a sense. So, but anyways, let me just go ahead and start with two quite new pick-up products. Remember I did the pick-up um, toy cars I did there, which look like the pick-up cars toys as well from Disney. Uh, well, I've actually got another one. In fact, I might show you this one here. Ooh, I wonder what this is. Looks like some sort of very weird pick-up vehicle thing. I've actually made this thing during Christmas Day though, and it wasn't really too bad. And uh, there's a Cargo train passing by though. Let's just hope I won't sound a bit gibberish and just talk about a, a lot of nonsense there on my YouTube channel because, well, obviously I'm not the greatest talker out of any YouTuber. But, anyways, uh, if you didn't know what this vehicle is, it's not just any sort of pickup vehicle, it's basically. Ooh, I might give you some sort of clue. It's based on a. Uh, it used to be a car manufacturing company in Australia called Holden. And these pickup trucks have actually combined with a sports car. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically a ute. And a ute is basically a word to describe, well, basically a sports utility vehicle combining a sports car with a pickup truck. And that is a classic example of one of these vehicles, eh? Also, look at the bonnet here, or the hood, whatever we're going to call it, is pretty much, just look how tuned. Um, the hoodie looks like the... <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying the word hoodie, but I can call it whatever I want the hoodie, hood, bonnet. Uh, anyways, there's the front here. Actually, it looks very remin... Oh my goodness. That looks very reminiscent of a Holden VE Commodore. Uh, which is like some sort of Australian car. And is uh, pretty much a successor to the... I don't know which... I don't know which car that holding used to produce. I don't know what version of the Commodore that they used to produce, but um, this vehicle was also the predecessor of the last of all Australian Commodores to be produced, and that was the VF Commodore. Okay, and it's very Disney Pixar car style. It's got green eyes, or well, he's got green eyes, and he's also got a very cheerful smile of blackness. There's no extra detail in here, but this guy here looks very, very nice. And he also has a name. Look at this, it's called Daniel Vernon Robertson. Uh, the Screamers VE Use SS. I don't know what SS means, but I'm pretty sure uh, this is the sort of vehicle that I could literally relate to uh, Holden, I would say though. Uh, unfortunately, Holden is discontinued because, well, people are sticking to, well, let's just say, foreign cars 
in, in Australia, and I think this this car manufacturer here in Australia being holding is sadly discontinued. In fact, it's going to get discontinued uh, next year, which will be on a Friday, obviously though, Friday the first of January, 2021. But I love the details on these cars, though. In fact, there's the other side here. There's the other side of where the doors is. Actually, I was originally going to be making this into some sort of little hatchback, like. Uh, the Adams car, the Vauxhall Adam car, that was more of a screamer sort of car though. And uh, I chose screamers because I love that face on the back on the front though. It's a perfect car logo here to be uh, sort of scary looking, but it looks really cool. Okay, and like many cars here, like many toy cars, you've got a barcode here on the side though. This side here actually though, there's actually on one side though, there's none on the other side though. The really detailing looks very, very nice, and actually, whenever I look at this license plate, it actually looks like a license plate from Victoria, Australia. And it's also got uh, a quattro of exhaust pipes. That looks very, very nice, eh? Lovely indeed, though. Also, look at the tile lamps at the back there, V E S S. Or should I say double S? And uh, I gotta tell you what, that car there looks very, very nice. I was originally gonna be doing it as like a, a saloon, or a hatchback car, or a coupe, but it looks much better to be a use. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness me. <laughs> I should have gone... But anyways, let me move on to another vehicle here, and it's one that looks like, well, one of the Thomas Friends characters. Um, obviously though, or a character from the Robo series, and I've actually made this one recently though. It actually took like almost one day to produce this. Which is interesting though. And it was this guy here. Okay. Um, it's one of those Pusky Twins, or should I say Pookie Twins? And it's Bill! <laughs> Obviously it's the same Bill that you see at the Thomas & Friends uh, Flash Railway Series book, so there's the back of Bill. Uh, I couldn't make Ben because I think it would be better to have, well, both Bill and Ben the Flower Pot Man. <laughs> oh my goodness, I get the joke now though, but uh, this engine here, oh, <laughs> look at his face, so, <laughs> look at his face, he looks very cheeky and menacing looking, eh, in true anime style, okay, obviously while being based in a saddle tank, looks very, very nice, I love the funnel detailing on the top, nice dome action here as well, but, um, yeah, it looks actually not too bad there, the other problem I can see is, oh, we had a cargo train derailed there, um, I'll really be right back though, but, what I've actually noticed is that, um, uh, let me try and edit with this vehicle today because um, the one problem I can say about this locking O2 SQC here, when I push along, um, the front buffer is actually, the buffer plates actually tend to move and they sort of, they sort of flop to that section there. I don't know what I'm saying here, but I'll start the title from there. Um, that's you just saw when I tried to push along Bill. His um, buffer plates on the front though actually flop backwards though, which is actually not a very good sign though because uh, what it's doing is it's actually dragging the wheels and it's actually not making the engine move a lot, which is very disappointing though. But I do understand though from my mistakes though. But anyways, I think I've edited it now. How does he look? Um, he looks okay. And um, I love his red wheels. Uh, luckily enough, I've just snipping the bottom section now. I'm, I'm luckily I've just snipped at the bottom section there. It's sort of flopping a bit though, but um, yeah, maybe I need to cut a bit more though, just to make it a bit more, I just say, um, a lot more better though. Uh, when it's running there, I suppose though. Let's see how this one goes. Uh, okay. Uh, less sloppiness, less sloppiness, but it uh, looks really, really good, huh? I uh, love the smoke box detailing, and I also love the front um, part up here. Overall, I love the um, windows there on the cab at the back. And what's very interesting about the cab is, is that, like many of the previous Thomas characters, you can actually open the cab roof like so, and you can actually put some money inside or put any little tiny things that you really want to have, like you know, like your little. Tap with mini eggs or whatever you want though on the bottom here. Uh, look like that. 
Look at this. Bill the tank to engine twin of Flip Flap China Clay. Here you go, it's made in the UK and China. Why aren't I surprised? There's a bit of a close up here. Okay. This is Bill. And as you can see, there's the nameplate here. Instead of Soda China Clay, he's been moved and converted to the Flip Flap China Clay, which is very strange indeed. I love the back detailing here of this engine, and there's the other side there. I also want to pinpoint here that the, um, the funnel of my, well let's just say new version of Bill is that um, yes, as you can see Bill's funnel is actually, um, um, how do you say, it covered a bit of glue, maybe not too much glue, but um, yeah it looks like it's drying, obviously though. It will take some time but I hope Bill will be a very fine and cheeky looking engine indeed. It's a very nice addition and I'll try and make Ben sometime in the future though, but there you go. There's Bill! Up you go Bill! And don't cause any much trouble though, or else you'll be causing confusion and delay! Oh yay! Anyways, let me just move on with something really really awesome, and it's one of the first proper core animal themed products. Although, as I'm reviewing products like this, it's actually been really cold outside though, 1 degree Celsius or minus 1 degree Celsius though. Obviously, it's just feeling like well, what you normally expect in, um, I don't know why my foot train keeps on derailing though, my blue cargo train from Tony Gale, obviously, though. And maybe the track just keeps on, you know, keeps on buffing though. But I do have a funny feeling that, um, you know, we're sort of going back to what we, we might have actually expected before the heat wave of 2018. We used to have, like, this sort of very weird, uh, weather phenomenon effect called the Beast from the East. And um, it was caused by, how do you say, sudden stratospheric warming. And what it did was that um, all that warm air in the Arctic has actually made a cold plunge straight downwards towards the UK. And to be quite obviously honest, whenever you think of sudden stratospheric, oh my goodness me, sudden stratospheric warmings, that's the main cause. And I think the reason why it was snowing was because, well, we actually had a very, um, how do you say? I don't know what it was, but I think the ocean oscillation was pretty much negative. So if it's a negative, well, cold air persists. But anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and turn my boat train back on, which is the Tony Clover EH200 yes, cargo electric locomotive, and I go back to where I've just left off. As you, oh, oh my goodness, you just saw these shadows there. That being too rough and ready though. Oh, I've just burped. Oh goodness me, you know. I'll show you where I put the light up though later on in this video though, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you this product here, the Australian South from Cassowary um, Shocking Flock Fly Pack. It's also tropical as well though. Can you see the word tropical? I can. Oh my goodness me, there's a trio of cassowaries waiting to assassinate your dreams of going towards Queensland, the Sunshine State of the Land Down Under. Australia, as we all like to say. £9.99 or £10. Actually, hang on, there's a little tiny piece of trash on the floor here. Let me just get rid of it, though. I could have just hoovered the floor, though, but, um... Anyway, let me just go ahead and take a look at the back of the packaging there. There you go. Look at that! There's some cool pieces of artwork of basically what a castaway would obviously look like, though. Looks really cool, eh? Right? I actually love the designs like that. Looks very Pokemon-y style. I also love these leaves, like so. Lovely indeed. And uh, I've also noticed that these guys are not always from Australia, but they're also from Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. Oh yeah, let me just go ahead and take a look at these. Oh my goodness me. Oh my god. Wow. I've also noticed, oh my goodness, look at that. I've also got coloured paper as well. Look at that. Oh my goodness, the neck looks really awesome. I love the fact that these guys have been made with coloured paper with some extra detailing of felt tips and also coloured pencils as well. I mean, look at the helmet as well there on the top there. It's actually a crest. But these birds, whenever I look at them, they almost make me think of a medieval warrior. I mean, just look how very, very uh, brutal these guys look though. I mean, if you come across these guys when you're on holiday in Queensland, Australia, and if you encounter these guys somewhere in the tropical rainforests 
of Australia, these guys will come after you do, especially when you feed them with food. And I've got a funny feeling that these guys are pretty much the most dangerous birds in the world, as the packaging has told me, Dave. What's even recognisable about these birds is that they look like some sort of weird emu with what it looks like to be a medieval warrior helmet on the top with a couple of wattles that look like some sort of weird cock. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to be very careful of saying the word cock. Um, obviously, these guys here, they actually, I think the red bits are called wattles. That's what they're meant to be called. And uh, I think the crest on the top is meant to be called the comb. Looks like some sort of weird giant dinosaur thing whenever I look at these guys. Okay, that looks very, very strange though. Obviously though. And uh, the best thing to do, I've actually seen a video of a person in Queensland, Australia, uh, of basically filming a cassowary as they come closer to you. The best thing to do is to basically walk back and you can also hold something which is not just a piece of food but you can hold onto something like, you know, a stick. You can just hold something there, a stick or anything else, which will make the cassowary sort of ward away from you though. But um, yeah, the chances of getting killed from a cassowary, uh, unfortunately, are pretty much high there because these birds are still aggressive and dangerous. And yes, look at the eyes there. The eyes look sort of pretty much, well, semi-realistic by the looks of it there, of course, but um, yeah, that's the sad part of um, cassowaries there. I've actually seen these birds before at a zoo in Malaysia. I think I've seen them twice, if you don't believe me though, because I went to Malaysia when I was a kid in 2007 with my family, and I also went to the zoo again in 2015 when I came across those freaking birds, which are pretty much flightless, and uh, yeah, uh, that was actually during my trip in 2015, with of course my family again, but this time with only just just a few days. I'm not gonna name them because, well, that's gonna, well, that's gonna basically bite my cheeks, say, eh, and give me the ulcers of my nightmares in my lips, say, eh, of agony. But anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to something else. These guys there, remember I did the Silver Girls last year? Uh, this one here is basically the Australian Silver Girl family flock of juveniles and adults 12 pack. And yes, because it's winter time, 16 pounds 50. Yay! Wonder what's up with Flip Up charging the amount of products like that though. I think, you know, winter time normally is basically the prime time for Flip Up toys to be very expensive because, well, it's not just because of the virus, but also because it's winter. In a sense that. It's way too cold though, but um, yes, let me just go ahead and take a look. And obviously, whenever I have a look at the Silver Girls now, these Sea Girls actually keep the same designs as the Black Headed Girls and the Silver Girls, which is interesting though. Well, sort of, but um, yeah, it looks quite nice. Hey? I love these birds though. And there's the other one there. I've just noticed the cargo train has taken another derailment though. You know, it's funny, whenever I look at the juvenile silver girls, they actually look like the juvenile version of the black headed girl, but they sort of look pretty much different though. Um, in a sense, they've got a lot more of a darker sort of beak though, rather than having like uh, black and pink, obviously though, but um, yeah, it looks pretty much similar though. I actually noticed that my train has derailed again. I wonder what's up with my train just getting. A whole bunch of the moment, I wonder why. Oh no. Uh, but anyways, I'll go back on to do some toy viewing later on though. Actually, that switch feels dodgy on that tummy power at EH5. Oh, sorry, 200, sorry. Uh, anyways, oh my goodness, I've got a couple of products dropped into the floor here. I can want to move them straight away from the bed though, otherwise they're going to cause some chaos though. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll take a look at all the silver girls here. Uh, strangely enough, there's no change. I would have expected more of a bulkier sort of body though, but um, uh, unfortunately there's no change though. Which is very weird because I would expect a silver girl to be a little larger than a black-headed girl, but um, no. Uh, I don't know about their real-life counterparts, but um, I'm pretty much it's 
I'm pretty much sure that um, maybe mass is the main thing though. And if a bird is pretty much heavier than the other bird, if the black headed girl is lighter than the silver girl, well it has to stay in that design. Um, I don't know why but um, obviously the brown headed girl from Southeast Asia and um, China pretty much has changed design, so was the grey headed girl from Africa. Wonder why these designs pretty much have changed eh? Obviously it's because of weight or mass. But anyways, um these guys look pretty nice though, they've all got names. Um all oh, this one looks pretty much Oh, it's a bit sloppy though, it looks like it's got paint. Very weird dark blue paint which has been looks like watercolour to me though, but um yeah, it's not too bad, not too great, not too bad. It, I would say it's okay. And uh, the packaging is good as well. But um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad for me, eh? And I'm just glad I'm doing Australian themed products, um, obviously, though. Uh, but I think um, things are get to be yet in the north at the moment now because, well, obviously. Uh, I don't know what to say, but whenever I'm in the UK. I'm banned of going away from this country until like, well, maybe when, well let's just say when the government is saying, hey you're free to go into any other place wherever you want to. Anyways, let me just go ahead and take a look at this product here. Oh, I wonder what this is. It's a tropical green uh, emerald tree monitor lizard small horde fire pack. It's quite a very weird product, eh? Hey? £9.95. Well, it literally says like five pence away from ten pounds. And what's quite funny is, is that these guys were closed because, well, these guys are native to the tropical islands of Papua New Guinea. Yes, Papua New Guinea and the Torres Strait Islands, which is basically a little archipelago. Oh my goodness me, archipelago of islands in Australia, uh, particularly Queensland. In fact, these islands are situated between Queensland and Papua New Guinea. Very interesting. Also, these lizards have got chompy jaw, I can say. Uh, I've actually made another product with some. I wonder what bugs I've actually made there before, though. In fact, there's another product with them. Well, I've actually made them recently. I can't remember which one it was, but um, it's quite a strange one. I don't know which one it was, but I think I've made another product which um, had some huge similarities there, uh, but it had cockroaches. Okay, but before we can take a look at the other part up there. Okay, this is what they look like. They've got zebra-like stripes. And uh, they're actually not really the most well-known species of monitor, though, in my opinion, because, well, I don't often see them. And, um, yeah, it looks quite nice, though. Maybe it's the wrong shade of green. But, um, I love these sort of lizards, though. Not too bad, though. I love the brown eyes, though. I've got chumpy jaw actions there at the front, though. And uh, once again, the reason why I've created them is because these animals are pretty much tropical. There's the other one there. Okay, so all of the designs they look pretty much similar. Uh, what's disappointing is, is that all these guys don't have any licensing info. But I love their tails at the back there. They look very stylish. Okay. And actually, whenever I think about these guys, they look like a dinosaur. Uh, specifically a sauropod dinosaur. Uh, I don't know which one it would it be. Would it be a Parasaurus or Brontosaurus? Maybe um, whatever saurus, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, these guys look pretty much uh, amazing. Uh, lovely looking uh, lizards. In a sense, they're based on a monster lizard. Also in Australia, these guys are also known as Goranas. Which is interesting. Anyways, I'm going to put them away inside like so without being a bit cranky there without saying too rough and ready you know like so in fact I'm gonna take a look at the one with the cockroaches which actually oh my goodness me 19 pounds that's pretty freaking expensive there's some cockroaches here on the packaging there and there's a very vicious looking lizard very vicious looking in a sense that Yes, I wonder why they're called monitors, I don't know why. Uh, but I got a funny feeling that is 12 pack. Ooh, look at that! That looks pretty much amazing. Uh, some sort of weird dumb cockroach running away from 
What am I the fucking hell is that lizard doing now? Looks like he's prowling into the universe of nowhere. And um, there you go, there's a couple of lizards doing selfies and doing shots just to basically impress me and the other people today. And um, oh yes, there's that very weird description here. It says real emerald tree green monitors are not that great as a pet, unfortunately, but are still kept in captivity, nevertheless. Sorry for the packaging I've just dropped there, but um, anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and unpack this and see what we have. Oh my goodness, man, we've got some cockroaches. Anyways, I've seen them lizards before. I don't want to take a look at them again. Well, I want to take a look at these cockroaches because I'm quite curious on how they made they. Oh my goodness me, they're like one of the most rough and ridiest bugs I've ever created they. It's sort of weird, but that's how I've created these guys they. And I'm um, just checking with all, got six. Pretty much I've got the same detailings, there's not much at the bottom there except for the legs. Okay, here we are. And it uh, looks very really nice. Yeah, it's quite interesting, cockroaches, according to what people might debate them, in my opinion, though, uh, or other people's opinions, uh, the cockroach would definitely be the only animal to survive if, my goodness me, if the world has ended day. I don't know, might be totally wrong though, but um, I definitely say that the cockroach might be the luckiest animal in the world though, because um, obviously that might be the only one to survive though. Without all the other animals around us, so but um, these guys look really amazing, though. But these guys can also be a very severe pest, very serious pest for the fact that these guys are oh, not a nuisance. They carry diseases and whatnot, but they also eat other people's food, which is really nasty to hear. But don't worry, you've got some lizards that will come and eat the cockroaches. Nom 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 nom. Okay, that was really awful, though. Anyways. Oh my goodness me, I've got a bit of a cold day, but um, anyways, I'll try and do the review as business as usual, I'll see. Or should I say, I would say, without being like Robotnik. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and put these away and straight forward. Oh my goodness me, oh, oh that was pretty much already there. You can see all the packaging correctly there. I should we just move on to something else, okay? Oh, let's take a look at this one here. Oh, the aggravated and agitated Suffolk Crested Cockatoos. This is Black Kite Fight Pack. It costs about £7.50. There's the back of the packaging here. And as you can see, there's some cockatoos basically mobbing a black kite. Now, the black kite overall was one of my favourite birds overall, though, during quarantine because. Well, I actually made 12, and I also did a 5 pack as well. Which, am oh my, oh my goodness me, which actually amazed me. Because I've already seen red kites before though. But with the black kites, although I didn't see them, they're actually in the same genus. Uh, it's called Malvus. I don't know which, which um, other scientific name does the black kite have. I know it's called Malvus, which is the genus name, but I don't know what its full species name. Uh, full species name, I actually just said there, there's the name there. Okay, it looks sort of pretty nostalgic today. Obviously, it actually reminds me of the, my models I made back in spring of 2020 when we had the lockdown. Okay, it's pretty much the same sort of bird there. But let me take a look at the sulfur crested cockatoos. <laughs> my goodness me. Uh, in Australia, uh, these guys are pretty much the ultimate pests because, well, these guys are well known to chew down verandas and people's houses. And because of their raucous squawking cars, they're pretty much a type of bird that people have been pretty much been complaining about. Their noise, obviously, though. And um, obviously, these guys are pretty much the main reason, the main sort of. I just say Twitter that is pretty much irresponsible for the huge amounts of annoying oh my goodness me uh, a huge amount of annoying complaints to the local noise pollution control authorities oh my goodness me I should have said annoyance complaints but anyways and uh, these guys have got their name hence the name Sulphur Crested Cockatoo you can see their crest is Sulphur it actually is more of a golden yellow tingy sort of colour though sort of a yellowish sort of tingy gold 
I love how it shines there. It looks really nice and shiny. Maybe take a look at the other one. Obviously, the eyes aren't that detailed that well, but um, they look really, really nicely detailed actually. Eh? And yeah, that side there, yeah, especially the wings as well. Also, I love the hooked beaks and the eyes themselves, especially that baby blue eye ring. I don't know if it's the right shade of blue, baby blue. But um, these guys are pretty much amazing, eh? very much amazing indeed. Oh my goodness me. You know what, these guys look really nicely done. Okay, so these cockatoos are excellent looking birds there to look at there. But anyways, I'm just going to put these guys back. Oh my goodness me, before I couldn't actually put these guys away there. Nevertheless, these guys can be great pets. You know, these guys can talk. You know, you can train them to talk. But if you're in Australia, you would basically tell these guys to be quiet. Go to bed, white cockatoo! And go to bed now. Anyways, off with the sunset as they drive, or should I say they fly away? Actually, it's not really a sunset sort of scene, no, but, um, yeah, I'm actually in someone's house now, but, um, here you go. All perfectly sealed. Let's move on to the next product. This one here. The Herring Girl Non Breeding and Breeding Mixed Flock 12 Pack, £16.50. Once again, Freaking expensive, freaking expensive as it sounds, and obviously, like more products in 2020, as we all know, because of the virus, we can see a little image of the coronavirus, which carries the COVID-19 disease that we all hate and love. Now anyways, though, there's the back of the packaging now, and there's a very interesting piece of detail in there about the birds themselves. Yeah, those with dirty brown hedge trees are... Their winter forms or autumnal forms. Very interesting. Anyways, I'm just going to take a look at what's inside. And obviously, yes, it's the same freaking cigars I've seen in previous videos. I like the. Oh my goodness me. Well, that's quite funny is, is that the large seagulls pretty much have got like the best flying animation. When I just pull their tails, I love the way that they actually fly. Particularly with those big wings as well, though. I love it. I love it a lot. There's the other one there. Okay, so it looks very, very nice, though. Actually, because of... Oh, my goodness me. Because I actually love these guys. Eh? In fact, it's one of the older designs of the Flapping Birds. Which looks really good to see, eh? Not too bad. Hey, yay! That looks really awesome indeed, hey? Eh? Lovely birds indeed. Here's the other one, flap, 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 and uh, my goodness me, in fact, obviously I don't know about you, but um, these guys, they look really amazing to look at, they, actually there is a wintering species called the Arslan Girl, which I might have covered this one in a previous video though, but um, uh, they're actually a lot more rarer than herring girls, if I was going to be encountering them at a reservoir or a park, or whatnot, but these guys, they look really awesome now. I've actually noticed that awesome girls actually have a lighter silvery grey back than those of herring girls. And um, obviously the other difference is, is that awesome girls have got more of a whitish wingtip. Or maybe they don't have wingtips, but um, yeah. And they sort of look dove-like in appearance, the awesome girls. Obviously, which look really, really nice though. Try to be careful not to basically trample and basically break the car and the train together by accident though because, well, they're my models and second, I don't want to disappoint, well, I don't want to basically trigger and disappoint you guys watching this video along the way now. Anyway, so we move on to our next one here. I think it's going to be bloody seagulls again. Here you go, it's another one of these products. Here you go. Herring Girl, First Winter Fledgling Flock, 12 pack, 19 pounds. Obviously there was a fishing product based on this. And I'm just glad I have, there's the back of the packaging here. Like so. There you go, there's some seagulls out of the background. Obviously, it's the same. We're going to take a look. I don't know why 19 pounds, I wonder why is it... Ah, oh, What the frick? Oh my goodness, they haven't been blooming painted, those ones there. What? Those guys haven't even got... Oh my god, these guys! Oh, 
give me a break. What? Oh, yeah, this one's a color. This one looks like a bit uh, wet though, but but um, I wonder why these guys. Oh my goodness, I mean, even this one here. And look at this, there's no black. Oh my living god, how come there's no black on the top? What well, is supposed to be? Oh my goodness, we like those guys there. They have black like so. Why, why, oh why? But anyways, um, these guys look very, very nice. I might put the black wingtip detailing there in the future though, but um, yeah, I've screwed it up there. Maybe I should have never covered this part up there in the first place, but nevertheless, these guys uh, they look okay. In fact, I might come back and uh, basically, um, I would just say, basically repaint. Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to say repaint, but I'm going to add the black detailings on the herring girls now. And uh, I know they've got names. Uh, all of them have names. They're actually called First Winter Herring Girls. Uh, but nevertheless, these guys, I think some of them need to be at the work so for some, well, for some substitute detailing to be added there, which is their black wing tips, which is missing there, their big black wing tips. And yes, juvenile girls have bigger, blacker wing tips than their adults would normally have though, which is interesting. Moving right along, uh, I think this pretty much there. I've only got two cigars left though, two products there. This one here, and I've also got another one there. Later on though, this one here is called the Flapping Birds Pre Non Breeding Cup Girl Roost Small Flock 5 Pack, £7.50. There's the back of the packaging there, which looks like that, which looks pretty nice to see. And, um, oh, <laughs> this one looks pretty cluttered though, because. Well, obviously I was having trouble to um, uh, get myself under control and yes, my mouth was biting, my cheeks there and um, obviously my mouth was in pain. So I had to uh, basically go get my mouth a bit of a rest there, but um, I think it's doing okay. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and um, crack this. Like so. I don't know about you, but... Oh my goodness me, they're just, what the, oh my goodness, they're just the same birds here, oh well, and um, same, 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 and uh, obviously, oh, there's no, well, there's not much detailing going on there, but um, still sort of clearly looks like a kelp girl, there you go, just lost singing for here, actually it's not lost singing for, that's the species name, why do I get confused? Ah, oh, kill me because I'm confused. But anyways, that's their species name. And there's also saying wintering kelp girl. And the reason why it's called a wintering kelp girl is because it's got those brown streakings in its head, which makes it a lot more autumnal or wintry. Obviously, though, which sounds pretty much interesting all of a sudden. And um, our next product here is this Australian Pacific gull. Fishing Fleeting Frenzy 12 pack. It's got some wishy washies there. £15.95. And what's quite funny about this price here, £15.95, I don't understand because, well, obviously, whenever I think about making this up product like so, it confuses me because, well, obviously, um, I don't know about you, but having expensive products uh, like this in the winter is pretty much. Um, the, the big rule though, um, yeah, I am allowed to do this, uh, but I've got to tell you what, it pretty much causes chaos though for Christmas buyers because, well, people just don't like expensive stuff. But anyway, there's the back of the packaging there. That looks okay. And uh, let me just go ahead and unpack this. I'm just glad I've got the Pacific Girls with me now. And I don't know about you, but these guys don't actually encounter in flocks uh, but rather in in pairs there, although I might have seen a video of someone feeding some pelicans in 2018 at Kangaroo Island and I presume there were like five of these guys there but uh, I might be totally wrong though because these guys are normally encountered singularly or in pairs which is quite interesting now um, I wonder how many we've got there. There's four, five, 
six. Hang on, there's seven. That's weird. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's weird. There's seven here. I don't know why there's seven. That's weird. It's actually more of a 13 pack. That's a very weird area there. I might destroy one of these guys though because, um, well, um, it's not really, um, what I really want to have though. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it's quite funny. I didn't realize there was a substitute bird just now though. But anyways, we've got some sardines there that look like wishy-washy. Uh, anyways, there you go, like so. And there's the other side here as well though. Sorry about the error though, but I've just ripped one bird because of that. Uh, anyways, we've got six of these. There you go, like so. And uh, what's very interesting about the juvenile Pacific girls is they actually look like some sort of weird I just say it looks pretty much like a combination between uh, the first winter herring girl and uh, the second winter herring girl, which is pretty much interesting, but with a lot more brown detailing going on there. But anyways, that's that part up there. Luckily, that other adult is was dead because if that other adult was present, well, it would have made no sense. So we've got twelve items in there, not thirteen. Ain't 13 an unlucky number? <laughs> Anyways, it really is unlucky. Anyways, let me just move on to this part right here. Oh my goodness me. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Oh, it's this one here. It's a... Let me just pan the camera back. It's a Royal Regal Blue Palette. Um, Hippo Flag Tail Tang Small Shoal 5 pack of school. Uh, 5 pounds no 5, it's basically... Oh my goodness me, are they trying to rip off Finding Nemo or Finding Dory? Obviously by the looks of it though. Oh my goodness me, it looks like a very weird, clever rip off of Finding Dory. There you go, it's basically Dory herself just animating, like so. There you go, there's a bit of reference there. Uh, the packaging there, there's not much information going on there, but um... Actually hang on, that packaging seems far much better though, it's a bit of... Yeah, I actually had to cut it like so because the packaging, I accidentally pulled it hard, it was a rip though, so I had to um, cut the one a bit though, and it sort of worked, maybe not though, but um, let's take all we have, and uh, I've got a funny feeling eh, that these guys are made with coloured paper, there's the fifth one here, okay, obviously these guys or girls, they look nothing like Dory, they just nothing look like Dory, uh, they don't really look like we might see on the film there, they're just generic uh, fishies though, but um, it looks sort of nice though to see, eh? And um, uh, disappointing fact is, is that I don't have any licensing info. I would love to see that. Not, but um, yeah, they look okay though. I love the colours added to these fishies though. I hope it's not felt tip detailing though. I hope it's coloured. What was I saying? I hope it's colouring pencil detailing or not felt it, but um yeah they actually look very, very nice in the way they sort of look. Okay, and um so is that one there. Anyway, those guys are pretty much done. And to finish the video off, in fact I'm gonna go ahead and show you this one here. Oh, it's the Indian Peacock Mayo Decorative Figures door pack. Yeah, it looks very, very nice, £7.95 is the price though, can you see it? There you are. And yeah, i got a funny feeling I must have made these guys uh, on Sunday because um, these guys are pretty much beautiful. But I've also went to the Botanical Gardens on Wednesday, on the very last Wednesday of October, and it was quite amazing though, just to see a male peacock, but there was also a peahen and a pea chick. Very cool, I love the petite style art though on the packaging there. I love these leaves though. And there's two peacock models there. And they're both on the Indian pea farm male cock or probably known as the peacock. There you go, it's perfect for a tropical jungle scenery. And uh, those tails are poseable but don't have any coloured eye spot patterns. Which is okay. It comes in two shades of green of either dark or bright green. And uh, both have non fungi tail crisps. They uh, look quite nice, so I would say, eh? Also, I love the detailings on that peacock there. Uh, the head looks a lot more realistic. Because they have this sort of very weird bluish, tealy 
bluey green tinge onto them, which is sort of interesting. Right? We'll just take a look what we have and see what we have. Oh my goodness, really, there's a bit of very really good sloppiness on this one here with some bright green tower detailing, which looks very, very nice, though. And, uh, my goodness, really, to demonstrate how uh, that peacock would have splitted its tail, it would have been a lot more like that, eh? I don't think it would stand well with its tail like so, eh? But, um, oh, goodness, me, look at this! Look at that one, eh? I could actually pose its, pose its tail, though, but I don't think it would stand well. Uh, okay, though, so, here's him. That's a lovely peacock, though. Here's the peacock, and I can actually pose his tail like so, I can actually pretend that he's displaying to a female peahen. Or peacock though, it's actually appropriately named as the peafowl. Uh, sadly they don't have any loss of singing fur, uh, but nevertheless these guys, they just look really nice to pose. And um, yes, really nice as this sounds indeed. I love the bright green pipe cleaners there, which look really, really nice. Uh, the, the crests on the top of the head, they don't have fringes, but they have got some detailing there, which looks really, really nice though. But uh, it looks, actually looks a lot more abstract. But it looks, looks okay though. Oh my goodness me, I love the heads. The heads and the neck though. I love the way they've been detailed though, because they look sort of realistic though, in the way I really like though. And, um, let me check out the dark green one because that one there looks pretty much amazing. What's quite interesting is is that the leg detailings also sort of correlate to the tower detailings, which is very nice to say. And this one's uh, a bit, how do you say, a bit, um, a bit hard to stand though. But um, because of the glue though, uh, nevertheless, I think it's doing quite nicely though. It's standing real nice and proud though. That peacock. And, um, yes, looks very nice. I can just pose the tail like so, if I wish I could stand him up. And once again, I could make him do some courtship displaying. Yay, look at that, spraying. Well, spreading his tail like so, ready to display once again for some more peahens. Obviously, we've got two. There might be some sort of weird confrontation or sort of fight. But I won't do that because that would be too sensitive for YouTube of today. Anyways, that's about it guys. Well, this review has been much more better than the previous one because obviously, uh, i got to tell you what, it's been much better doing this sort of video like that today because, well, it wasn't that as rough as ready as, oh my goodness me, what was that saying now? It wasn't really rough and ready as the other video that I did before on two weeks ago on Sunday, yes, two weeks ago on Sunday, which was actually uploaded on the 27th of, of the 70th body because of the delays that I was doing so far, eh? With Life Without Toys. And, um, just glad that I've just got these products being done, then. Eh? Still need to do some extra detailing for those seagulls there, the first winter ones. Oh my goodness me, I just saw some other previous toy cars there. Um, the Adam and also the Escalade. Uh, Callum, the, um, Escalade sort of cargo. Callum Spinner. Obviously, though, but anyway, let me just go ahead and put these products away, though. But uh, before I can actually put these products away, though, um, let me just go ahead and show you on how my layer has been built. And I've actually noticed that my battery on the train here has been draining there because I must have been making this whole damn video for pretty much for quite a long time now. And I'm just glad and just speaking real fast, though. Let me just go ahead and show you how I built the layer, though. And uh, it was actually next to that radiator there. And in fact, uh, my camera there, uh, let me just show you. It goes right down there. Uh, I can tap the train where it's going now. I have to be very careful though because at any moment when I go ahead and pull that webcam with the USB flash drive on the back though, uh, sooner or later it will just pop out and then my video would be a great big monstrosity, or a great big piece of uh, atrocity though, but anyway, I think that's about it in this video though, hopefully if you enjoyed the rest of this video, go ahead and give this video a good like, like so, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more of videos like this. Also, you might be wondering, 
Oh, Ivan, oh, you still got YouTube, haven't you? Well, no, not really, actually. No, I've got a video account, but I also have, and I know some people are pretty much going to dislike this, I also have a TikTok account, which is pretty much one thing that not many people are just going to be quite sure about what I do on TikTok, but it surely is quite amazing indeed. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, thanks so much for watching, and bye for now. As always, as usual. Okay, goodbye.